Pretty much Dan and Worthen, and I am absolutely hyped for this final match. Of course, I'm TJ, joined by Chucky and Crip for this final match. Are you guys excited as I am? I'm I am so excited. After watching those last two matches and the endings to both, just incredible. Both of these players' journeys to the finals. Yeah. I just feel like these semifinals were so good. Yeah. It might, it might be hard to top in the final. It definitely is going to be hard to top. But let's take a look at the bracket for what we've seen so far today. We started off the day with Demigod versus Domdis, Roger versus Phone Tab, Trump versus Kit Kats, and Raynad versus Life Coach. And at the end of the day, we're left with two players standing. Phone Tab, the guy that made it all the way here from the open bracket, the guy that all these pro players that are qualifying these tournaments attribute some of their success to, the guy that's never made it to a land performance before and uh, gets really emotional about, about some of these games, Phone Tab. And then, of course, I mean, I guess it's sort of good guy versus villain. I hate to paint it as that story, but this is sort of yeah. what it's come to. Yeah, Raynad uh, is not the most liked in the Hearthstone community, but uh, I think he does have quite a few followers still. I don't think he's the evilest of villains, yeah. but uh, it is it is definitely a very different story. Raynad is very established in the Hearthstone yeah. community, one of the most established. And, uh, you know, a win for him, I'm sure uh, he'll want it just as much as anyone, but um, it would mean... Uh, much more to uh, to phone tap if he uh, if he took the prize. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think we all like Raynad for mm -hmm. you know the saltiness and all all that, but you can definitely tell this means a lot to phone tap. He might be the happiest guy I've ever seen to be in a grand finals of an event. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we want to know what you guys think as well. Join in on the conversations on Twitter. Follow us at ESL Hearthstone. Use the hashtag HLS. Let us know your predictions. You can also. Let's use the hashtag phone tap win or rain ad win to see uh, how many people are on each of these guys' team. You said there's still a it's lot just, of people out there that love contest, rain ad. Though. You, you can't do that. No, no we can do that. Get no, the support out there for phone tap. Rain yeah. ad has tons of fans, <laughs> but rain ad fans show your support too. Yeah, no, but it's definitely going to be awesome. And of course, none of this would be possible without our wonderful sponsors, Plantronics and Gigabyte. We're able to put on. A crazy awesome land event like this. Fly 16 of the best players in the world uh, to Burbank, California. We got They got to hang out for a while. We got to send them to the Blizzard campus. And, of course, none of this would be possible at all without the people that make Hearthstone Esports possible. So a uh, big shout-out to Plantronics and Gigabyte. Uh, if you guys want some of their gear, you can get some Plantronics Rig headsets, some Gigabyte motherboards. Uh, head to those links uh, down below that you just saw. Go to legendaryseries.com and uh, support us, support what we do here. And uh, with that, I think it's almost time to move in to the grand oh, final match of Season 2 Legendary Series, Raynad versus Phone Tap. Okay, what do you guys think of this? Both players, starting with what you know most people would consider their weaker decks that have kind of struggled in this event. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I feel like Tempo Mage and Mech Shaman kind of play out the same game and they suffer the same weaknesses. Yeah, and I mean, I think in, in this matchup, I think the mage is probably favored. Like, Just because it's slightly more consistent. Yeah, I mean, it's the Shaman goes face and has a lot of damage, but it doesn't really have any kind of cheaty mechanics where you get to get ahead yeah. for the same mana. I feel, mana. though... Um, while the mage is more likely to get a better head start, just because of the nature of the deck, um, I feel if it does go kind of toe-to-toe, -to -toe, the shaman might take the mid-game with the bigger creatures, weapons, and maybe fire elementals. Yeah. I feel like stuff like this mech warper might struggle because of Ooh. cards like flame cannon that rain edge just going to keep. Oh, I didn't see that. That oh, looks like card. Flame, oh, waker. flame waker. Yeah. He also has the coin as well. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, but it's still a little awkward. You can't really get that out too quickly. And getting things out quickly, I think, is the name of the game here. Wow. Yeah. I think we're going to see... Oh, wow. So, like you said, really trying to play fast. Yep. One mana like Spellbreaker. It. It's good against Mech Warper. Yeah. Uh, I think we might just still see Flame Cannon yeah. on, the, on the Mech Warper. Ooh. Now he's going to debate. And I think... Yeah, I think... Maybe the Whirling Zapmatic's better because you get to potentially abuse the mana discount. Uh, I don't know if going face is really the victory here. I think just controlling the board and getting the, the slightly more valuable trades is going to be the win. Yeah, it is, but I think Whirling Zapmatic will draw out kind of a removal spell. So will Mech Warper. So which one's more valuable? Like you said, it's a Mech Warper. So I think you go with your less valuable one first, potentially. Mm, I think the Mech Warper might actually be less valuable. Okay. Because you don't have another mech. Yeah. 
he top decks a two drop, he'll be sad. But if he top decks anything else, he'll be fine. Okay. It just it turns out better as well. Yeah, I think it turns if, out better. If the whirling zapmatic died to the flame can and then he plays the mech warper, then that gets shut out by the spell breaker. So you probably just have to play flame waker just as a two four here. I don't think you're worried too much about taking six damage. Uh, you can just yeah. trade into it the next turn. You can. I think the first six damage is fine. <laughs> yeah. After that, though. Yeah. Yeah, that uh, makes those crackles deadlier. Yeah. Mm. Wow, I'd be really surprised if the arcane unlocked. I think he's just faking it, like <laughs> making it seem like he has a bunch of different options. But well, we talked about taking six is fine. It's fine right now, <laughs> assuming he can kill I it think next turn. I think the second best play is the mirror entity. Uh, it's really unfortunate for phone tap here that he didn't like draw a two drop because then you could consider crackling and no, two dropping I, I think you, you crackle and totem yeah because you, um I oh think you want to totem first. first okay well whatever Lucky. looks like it didn't matter it, uh. it could have mattered <laughs> i well okay you know phone tap made that play on purpose he was willing to earth shock yeah had the crackle rolled three to protect, and, and the... he liked his 100% odds mm -hmm. better than his 25% times 25%. Yeah, yeah. I think I like the Manor Ramirez to here. Yeah, he is. You know, we talked six isn't too big of a deal, but six plus six, that's 12. You're getting close. I wonder. I think you can take another six. There's not many, <laughs> and then three more sixes, and then you're dead. <laughs> yeah, it's. There's not many duds in the Shaman. Deck. Uh, he can plop a uh, a Cogmaster into the Mirror Entity, but he would have already played that because he had turns where he had open amounts of mana. Yeah. Well, this is a much more aggressive turn. Uh. Hmm. So whatever you play gets copied, and then next turn you're probably gonna fire Elemental. Like and I think you're probably gonna trade probably this turn with the four three. Yeah. Yeah, I think the Shredder's better. And Especially because it might, like, Raynet might not trade. Yeah, your opponent has showed you that you, that he doesn't have a damage spell, or else he would have removed that Zapomatic. Yeah. Right. So when you play your Shredder, Raynet, like you said, might trade into it, and then you get to fire Ali whatever he got, and your minion basically has charge. I actually think Raynet is probably not going to trade. I think he's going to kill the, the spell damage totem, most yeah, likely. Yeah, that and makes it, a lot and, of sense. And if he does that, it makes the fundamental slightly stronger, which right. might make Raynet trade, but... Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, four yeah. threes are. It seems what like you love to throw that fire elemental Ooh. into. Mm. I think I like Shredder a lot more here. Yeah, it gives Raynet a much better play. <laughs> yeah. He does. Uh, He's gonna decide pick. to do that and trade. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. I like it. Yep. It's really on Raynet to uh, dictate the game from this turn. Frostbolt off the top, pretty good though. Pretty good. Like he didn't have a great play. Um, he still does. He still would have to ping with his mana. Unless he wanted to arcane no, I, intellect. I think it's likely that he's going to mana worm frostbolt. Yeah. But um it's really it's on mm -hmm. the uh, on on the shredder RNG side. Yeah. Because if he gets like a three two, that sucks. That really sucks. But on the other hand, if something with one health comes out of it, he just can ping it off and he's just gonna fireball for mana efficiency. Just so that later oh. in the Oh wow. Yeah, that sucks. Well, if he doesn't kill the spell damage yeah, then totem, that's, that's a Earth disaster. Shock. Just destroys the 4-3. Yeah. Oh, Whoa. wow. I think that's like a, almost a game-losing attack to face. As enticing With as this it hand, is. I think it is. He's got a lot of longevity with his hand. He can play a little bit more of a grindy game. He doesn't have to rush. He's debating between just all three anything targets. Else. Anything else is fine. Anything else is fine. Yeah. Just face seems really bad. It's ambitious. Okay. <laughs> oh. Whoa. Um, yeah, I think you do the I think I'd kill them. Oh, really? Well, might have been better to do the mana act just because in the immediate future. He kills off the fire elemental, but yeah, just by yeah. using spells. Yeah. Well, to be fair, he might have been able to do that with the mana worm, too. You play a spell, play a spell, and then ping. That's less likely, though. It is yeah. less likely. I think he might have sort of mech bear cat. Wow. <laughs> That's I, don't, a I don't think he card. can play it this turn. No, though. you can't. But 
that fits the deck really nicely. Yeah. Wow, it really does. There's not many ways that you can just kill that off right away, unless you spell power Lava Burst it or Crackle it for six. So that thing's going to get quite a bit of value. Get more tokens yeah, to they're... use with the Flame Wakers and the Archmage anti The unfortunate Wake part, her. yeah. yeah the point. unfortunate part is the Boom's going to come down, and so now Phone Tap has attacking initiative, yeah. especially with the Boom bots. Beep. Yeah. If that thing didn't cost three, people tuning into the stream might think that Rain had actually. Well, no, you can't. It's true. And the the thing is, it costs three mana, but it still sucks because yeah. Big Game Hunter still kills it with a battle cry. Yeah, but yeah, there's true. no big game hunter in this match. Yeah. Well, that was totally a joke. <laughs> Went over my head. Chris. <laughs> yeah. We have to look at your face to see your sly smile. Yeah, Crip's just like the most smug person. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> well, can he play his whole hand? I think so, right? I think he has just enough mana. I wonder. But he'd have to trade yeah, in a would. boom bot. He does. Mm. So I think you might even earth shock the seven six here, rather than the no. Okay. The secrets are pretty. He needs to deal. trade in a boom bot. Is the is the weird part. I don't really understand. He has a chance to give him four spare parts. Oh, that's okay. that's a good bomb. Yeah. He didn't want it to hit. Yeah. And I that Annoyertron. I don't understand why he had to trade the boom bot. Like, why is it so important to totem there? I feel oh. like just putting more damage on the board is fine. For some reason, I thought he could get all of his uh, creatures down. No, 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 no. He couldn't get all of his creatures, but his decision was uh, 3 wanted four, the totem. totem or the Yeti. And I think the Yeti just putting more damage on the board is a little better. Uh, potentially. I mean, it looks like yeah. Phone Tap's really far ahead. Yeah. And we pegged this Shaman deck as the deck he really needed to get a win with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it's just been so inconsistent for him. And in the last series, he... Breaking a sweat every series. Really struggled. Yeah. And if he finds one with it first, it opens up for two decks. Okay, and his other two decks are strongly teched against weapon classes. And Raynet has two. He's got Hunter and Warrior. We saw Ooze and Harrison in the Druid, plus a Harrison in his own Hunter. I think we're kind of like bypassing a part of the game here a bit too hastily. Okay. Um, Rain had frost, uh, frost bolted a Doctor Boom and fireballed a Shredder. <laughs> uh, Man, that's efficiency. True. Also, potentially should have attacked first here. Not sure. Oh, I yeah. guess it was at five. Okay. Was it? Yeah. Okay, for one. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. If he draws into Flame Rain, he's going to have a bunch of spare parts. Doesn't have a great way through. I might have even pinged off the the divine shield because it's so you know annoying to get through. Yeah. How do you do it? So he's gonna set up a lot of taunts, give some of them attack, just play a bunch of stuff. I think I consider stealthing the three two. Hmm. Just to open up more opportunities for you to be able to use your hand next turn? Well, you're playing Tempo Mage based on spells, and you have two spells, and one of them draws more spells. I think you might be holding it for Antonitis. I see. So it shouldn't be too hard to get through these taunts. No. Uh, health is his biggest resource at this point in the game, since he's still at 30. Well, so he wants second. to find a way for this three damage to connect into a creature to preserve his board. The main question There's is... There's a three health creature that can be connected with. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, the main question here is, will Dr. Boom have to run into a 0-2? And it, right now, I think it does. Mm -hmm. Because he needs to either get the swap spare part off the Yeti or the attack spare part. And if he can get that, then the Anorotron can get through a taunt. And me. his uh, Dr. Boom can hit face for 7, which is incredibly important. So he's going to start out by killing the Yeti, which is good. And he got the wow, reversing part. The so you use that on the 0-2. Kills it instantly, and you can push through your 7 damage plus 1. So you put your opponent to 12. But do you have to do that? I feel like maybe a control play is okay as well. Uh, I really like killing your opponent. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Okay, he will go for a control play. He is very ahead on board. And basically, unless a lot of things go wrong, you that's won't the, lose the That's the start board. of something going wrong. Yeah. Yeah, potentially. That's not very good for Phone Tap. No, it's not. Suddenly, I like your play better. 
Going face. <laughs> <laughs> I would have expected that to come from you, Crip. Mm. There's just so many spells. Like that, that Source of Princes is amazingly valuable. Yeah, it's so far going to reduce two mana from his hand, which basically lets him ping. And ping actually isn't that relevant. Mm, no. Unfortunate for him, but... Mm. The one thing is that Raynad, of course, he drew into his Arcane Intellects early. He's got Azure Drake and Phone Tap's out of cards. So if yeah, you can sort of grind him out a little bit. He's completely run out of stuff. Yeah. It's so weird. Like, both players are now playing the grind game. Yeah. The top yeah. deck game, the value Phone game. Phone Tap has two 8 8s and a Ragnaros in his deck. Two Fell Reavers and a Rag. Yeah, but if he gets. And a Lothab if he gets would be this insane. Particular type of 8 8, he's not going to have anything else. <laughs> Well, that's fine, though. There's a lot of spare parts. Yeah. The 8-8. Eight, eight. I guess the free spare part is what you're worried about. Yeah. Mainly if you're him. But the mech bear cat. The mech bear cat. Loaded up his hand. I would actually it, it, it. really love a Fell Reaver right now. A Fell Reaver would make this game pretty exciting. It <laughs> would. Oh. Aww. Well, you're going to want to attack first. Unless you plan on killing the 2 2 with your attack. That would be the valuable play, yes. The value play. But you could take your opponent to 10. Right, but you didn't choose to take your opponent down to 12 yeah. last turn. It's it's interesting. Like, your play line had to change because Reynad drew the second fireball. Yeah. He was able to kill off your stuff. But Reynad's going to need even more. Yeah, now you're in a situation, though, where. No fireballs left. Reynad's the one who's sort of playing reactively and he's mm -hmm. having to focus on clearing the board and. It gives Phone Tap opportunities to draw into Burn, which is a big thing. I mean, yeah. he's still got Lava Burst, Second Crackle, Doom Hammer, Rock Biters. Yeah, Second Power Mace. Second Power Mace, yeah. So there's a lot of things that might just win him the game next turn. Yeah, normally you're really happy to see Emperor, but in a late game, you know, when you're about to die, not yeah. what you want. And basically what this means is at least the 6-7 and the 1-1 are going to live. So that's 7 damage at least. And three damage is a break point for the Shaman. Nearly oh, half the cards, yeah. maybe even more in his deck, do three damage. Yeah, fire, fire Elemental, elemental Rock Biter. Oh, no, he's, he can... Uh, Reynad can take do. four what off the board. Do. Okay, he can take four off the board with the, the spare part. But he's not going to choose two. He's going to leave up the 1-1. One, one. And basically what Crip was meaning was you could trade the... You could kill off the taunt with the 2-2. Two, two, yeah. Spare part up the 3-1, trade it, and ping, ping off the 1-1. One, one. One. Yeah. Which would make you not dead to three damage. But that's, that's, that's not three damage. Probably the worst draw in his deck. I would just go all face. It's the best thing for mirror entity. It is. Kind of. Um, not sure how relevant that is. I wonder if even there was merit to not playing it. Mm. And now he's thinking, do I trade? But that cuts your outs a bit. Yeah. No, I think you absolutely go face. Three okay. damage just, it's just. It's another yeah. bulk of cards. It's your one fire on the left, both rock biters. Yeah. Power Th mace. That alone is good enough for any Power mace. Yeah. That's yeah. four out of I didn't see how many he had left, but that's felt like twenty five percent of his bit. cards nearly. Because that's about five drops right there, and he has Yeah. Less Regardless, Raynat's gonna yeah. need some stuff here. Yeah. Well, he could not be dead to board, Raynat. With all the totems, Flame Cannon, he's going to have to get lucky. Does he? Uh, I believe so. You can't clear more than... You could kill all three totems, but then you can't kill the Yeti. Yeah. So it's going to be like a one and three to kill the Yeti. Yeah. It's... Mm. I would definitely trade. You could actually time rewinder the Azure Drake, Drake after attacking with it. Yeah. Uh, use it to kill off I'll something. You. Thing is, we'll if, if you just play it safe here, it's pretty good. Yeah, I think you don't do that. I think you just... Yep. Yolo. You let it rip now. Ooh, rip. Never lucky. And now you have to kill the Yeti with both your guys. And we're at the point where basically Raynan's not pressuring at all. So... And his hand's empty. Not yet. There we oh, go. Oh, that's pretty good. That ruins some outs. That ruins Quite a, a lot of outs. Yeah. Phone tap. not happy about that, but... Still... He knows he's still in a good burst, spot. Crackle. Yeah, fire he just elemental. has so much time left with his life total. That won't do it, but he can stealth it, and then that makes Earth Shock an L. I think you uh, you attack with the uh, yeah with the.
cog. Right, because master. his cog his cog master will yeah, trade cog for master. yours. That's right, the cog master. And then he'll ping it off. And phone tap agrees with that. This makes uh, Doomhammer into an out again. That's about it. Yeah, Earthshock is an out now. Oh, oh or is it? I. He's got to get. Can you really go for that? He's got to get exceptionally. You can make lucky. it a fifty f or not? No, it'd be a twenty-five percent. Well, the big thing is. Oh no. He, I like twenty-five percent. You like twenty-five? percent? Yeah, I probably do too. Like. I the wait. Fire. I don't it know doesn't do is. it. What? It's, it's the it, same reason why. Uh, wait. Why wouldn't he trade first anyway? Uh, you no, would want it was it was the right play, I'm sure. Rainad will tell us. What emote? Hello. All Rain right, Rainad is now trying to play as awfully with tempo mage as possible <laughs> to convince the Blizzard Balance team to nerf that too. <laughs> okay, I see. I remember I was actually watching Rainad stream the moment he realized that you couldn't stealth Flame Waker either. <laughs> Clearly didn't get enough experience with all yeah. seven. It's a learning parts. process. It is. It it's actually really is. played mage before the tournament. You just made the deck on the fly in the morning before. Yeah, I've I've seen him play this quite a bit actually. Yeah, so oh, like okay. Crip said, even yeah, even if you didn't right. draw it here. There it is. And that's well it. Played. Well played from Phone Tap. Gonna take game one with his shaman deck. Yeah. Which is a huge win for him. Yeah. The first win is oh. in the books Raynet, for Phone Tap. Raynet had a one in four chance. To he had a one in four and you know, didn't do it correctly. And I feel like if he frost bolted uh, instead of fireball on the shredder and fireball that play was really interesting. on the Doctor Boom, I think he could have saved some life points. Mm -hmm. And I think both the let's say weird things out of the way, he could have maybe drawn up that game into a win. Yeah. Uh, what he was thinking with the fireball over frostbolt, I think, was frostbolt's a more flexible card for his deck with yeah. like the flame mm -hmm. wakers, yeah. with the Antonitis, with the Sorcerer's Apprentice. Yeah. So we, if he frostbolted, we, we understand the idea, yeah. but. It didn't like work if, out if when your you opponent's next card is and boom. Then, and then your opponent plays a big card, yeah. you, you have nothing. Yeah. Especially with, I mean, there's Fell Reavers, there's Rag, there's Boom. There's a lot of stuff you yeah. want to Fireball and not Frostbolt. And so the Frostbolt just ended up saving him seven life. It wasn't enough at the end. And mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty interesting game. Yeah, right. I feel like, uh, let's just call it nerves. I think both players could have done uh, a few things differently let's just call it nerves. well let's just call it nerves okay well put crip yeah and reynad's gonna go in with the mage deck again yeah this time it's against druid pretty favorable i'd say for reynad yeah um, depends um tempo mage does lose to itself a lot of the time <laughs> i think druid gives you a lot more openings than most other classes right. to win yeah. though well i'd still say the mage is slightly favored yeah yeah um and especially, Mirror Entity gets a lot of value. Especially since Phone Tap, he said in one of his interviews, and I talked about it a little bit earlier, his deck is teched heavily towards weapon classes, and so the techs that he has against non-weapon classes really hurt him. Harrison Jones and Ooze in his Druid deck, if he draws those in his opening hand, just having a vanilla 3-2 or vanilla 5-4 is not that great against, against the Mage deck. I actually kind of disagree. I think... The ooze is in addition to the existing <laughs> number of two drops, and just having more early game is good against Tempo Mage. Well, uh, it gets eaten up really, really doesn't easily. Really play two drops, and especially with wild growth, you don't really have time for it. But it is a nice thing to put yeah. here. Into you're, me. you're hard mulliganing for wild growth anyway. It's sort of like, well, I just I just feel Druid also loses to itself. Wow. Oh my goodness. This is going to get flame cannon, so it's not that big of a deal for Raynan. Yeah. I think it might get flame cannon next turn. Yeah, you can wait two turns if you're Raynad. So he could coin out Mad Scientist. That's what he's going to do. Looks good. Yep. I would maybe consider trading, though, if I were phone tap. But he's just going to hope he doesn't have the flame cannon. Well played. I feel like this well game is played over. from <laughs> Raynad. I, I actually agree with Raynad. You agree with Raynad? This game's over. About what? <laughs> this game's over. Yeah, I mean, his plays have been correct, sure. No, I, I feel like the Druid can... Oh, the Ooze! The Ooze! Double hero power into drop the <laughs> Ooze to get that mirror entity. Yeah! Oh, man. That's not that good. But wouldn't you have rather just had a Shredder there? Oh, man. Yeah, a lot of things. Yeah. Well, he's going to Lothab next turn, for sure. Yeah. Oh! Whoa. The Entity. Now if he top decks... Is there another secret? I thought he revealed yeah, only two You know, uh, Keeper, if he, he drew Keeper, he could actually use it for the damage. 
Yeah, and it would, would kill the scientist, get no work. secret, yeah. and then copy it. Right. So I'll, I don't know about that. It works out really well. Uh, phone tap just gonna throw out the loath up. Mm -hmm. Why? Yeah, you can get that. Uh, Why did you do that? Uh, not too sure. It stops the tempo. Does it? Well, it, it would allow you him. You play if, a five-five without charge, well, and you give your opponent a five-five with charge. Imagine if you played something else. He could have dealt with it with a spell and then had an face. extra creature on the board. Yeah, it's just face from Rain Yeah. Him. I actually really like this. It looked like he was really hesitant to do this earlier, just go face with this mage deck. Uh, but, yeah, seems good here. Yeah. Druid no. usually only plays like one creature per turn, so if you can just overwhelm them and start using spells to deny your early spells to deny their creatures and then draw into burn spells later on, this is one, one of the reasons why Tempo Mage is favored in this matchup. Yeah. Um, Raynan's gonna have, you know, at minimum, 8 damage heading into next turn. He's gonna put his opponent to 12 if he just all faces. And with the 0 mana unstable portal, even more tempo. I'm starting to think that maybe Phone Tap didn't do uh, as much research as he could have on Raynad. Maybe in same remark as Raynad said, he just has no idea what's going on with Phone Tap. Because <laughs> I think if you knew that was Mirinti, you would not play Lothip. You'd just not. He has to have known, though. We've talked about it a lot that it's just double mirror entity. Yeah, I think he knew. I think uh, he's also on a team, Team Heartletics, that I'm sure they have a lot of people kind of behind the scenes doing yeah. work for him and yeah. saying, hey, you know, there are these cards in these players' decks for this match. And I know Sixo has been helping him a lot. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. If you think about it, if he had played something else, he could have dealt with it with like a Frost wow. Bolt and then had an extra creature on this board turn is that he ridiculous. wouldn't have been able to deal with. Wow. His wildest dreams can come true with this unstable portal. Raynan's thinking about just frostbolting face, I think. He's like, maybe I just want the damage. What I kind of want to see happen mm. is that frostbolt face, and he just moves all his creatures quickly to the face, and then the spells trigger the shredder into a doomsayer that's not killed. Wow. That'd be fun. It would be fun. Bold. <laughs> I know you're all about that. the fun. <laughs> <laughs> well... I think he also wants to trade in a scientist, is what he's thinking. Mm -hmm. You want to get that mirror into the restrict your opponent's plays even more. So it's going to start with Unstable Portal. We'll see what he gets. And this plays around Doomsayer for the most part. It really does. Wow. If he gets a creature that's two or less. Whoa! Wow. Esports. Yeah. Well, Raynad said once upon a time, I think I Unstable Portal is the best card in the entire game. That was game. a five damage freeze face frostbolt. That was a five damage frostbolt. That's Next turn, good. it might be six with the Drake, though. I guess. And I mean, this is, you know, 14, so he has to heal. He is committed to healing with Ancient Lore, and you're not going to win the game that way. You're just not going to win the game. Yeah. I don't think there's many ways you're going to win the game either way. Zero way to win this game for phone tap. That is 14 on board, four from hand. He needs a lucky Flame Waker hit. Hmm. Doesn't really need it. <laughs> to kill him this turn? <laughs> to yeah. kill him this turn. I want him dead this turn, <laughs> PJ. If he did Frostball last turn, that would have been it. Yeah. Here we go. I'm sad he didn't do this last. There, it, there it is. Let's clean that up. That's lethal. Yeah. All right. Well, both so players. That was, that was completely brutal. Yeah. Like we've talked about the tempo mage. You either get brutalized or you just completely demolish them. Well, phone tap in this tournament is no stranger to getting brutalized. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he's still here. But this is a new situation for him, you know. He doesn't have to win with Mech Shaman anymore this yeah, entire tournament. But now Reyna doesn't have to win with Tempo Mage the entire tournament. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so we're down to good decks. Yeah, we're basically oh, down to the actual final of the final <laughs> on the final day of the ESL finals. <laughs> wow. Yep. Yeah. Both players, two more wins left to go. Reyna now with uh, Warrior and Hunter remaining and Phone Tap with Druid and Hunter remaining. Hey, you have to favor Reyna. Yeah. yeah. I believe his, his patron warrior play has been quite on point today. Today, yep. Today, that's what I said, today. Yeah. 
Glad Good. we cleared that up. Good. Yeah. You, you know, do well, have you do have to factor in the fact that I'm I can't help but mention it. Harrison Jones plus that's Ooze. true. That's true. And yeah. also a Harrison Jones. Both. He's yeah, got Harrison he, Jones in his the, hunter as the, the well. Druid, the Druid is a little behind just in the matchup as a whole, but with with the extra weapon removal. Yeah. We we talked about that. I don't think we came to a real decision though, because it's it's still kind of a bad matchup. <laughs> yeah. Well, but phone tap faced so. Roger, yeah. and Roger had just the absolute nuts draw with Despite and the. Turn five patron in a generator. Yeah, that's the thing. And he oozes the death bite. That's the thing. Won. Like the the nuts draw includes a weapon. Yeah. When you get like the second nuts that doesn't include a weapon, I think you just crush them. Well, the weapons are like what you need to do well. Yeah, they're pretty instrumental. And I believe that's the matchup we just saw on screen is going to be Druid versus Warrior. Mm -hmm. So I know this is probably what Phone Tap wants. Clearly, if you're putting the weapon removal in the Druid, it's to get a favorable matchup against the Warrior. Yeah, and the Hunter, it doesn't really need the weapons as much. This is a very important match because Hunter is pretty favored against Druid. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the thing is, the Hunter's probably just hitting your face, just trying to race you before you can really combo off and do anything big. Right. So they're going to get one wow. hit off weapon anyway. Whoa. Wow. That draw. The, the question is, like, do you keep all of this? Probably, I think right? That's the prayer. That's the prayer there. That's Dr. Boom. I need you now. Or Ancient of Lore. Well, like Dr. Something. Boom kind of dies to like Whirlwind Execute even. Okay. So I think, I think you'd rather just stream like a bunch of good threats. Mm -hmm. Even Ancient of Lore just to kind of like replenish your hand. Yeah. But obviously Dr. Boom. Insane if they don't have Execute. Just going to smork them to death. Dropping an Innervate. Yeah. I, I, think, actually, I, agree. I actually don't know how that works. I, 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 I haven't played Druid enough to draw into this that is in my fine. Mulligan stage. I think this is fine from him. Okay. He, he realizes sometimes too much of one thing is not good. How frequent is that? You've played some Druid. Uh, not very <laughs> frequent. Sometimes you'll get the double Innervate, but without the Wild Growth, you usually keep it. Mm -hmm. um, double Innervate, Wild Growth with garbage. He decided not to Innervate the Shredder here because he wants to have a flexible curve later on, and he's scared of Fiery War Axe. Seems fine. Wow. Maybe not now. Wow. Now you can do shredder and a shredder. Yeah, I think he's I think he's thinking, do I want more pressure? Mm -hmm. And I think the pressure would have been okay, actually. Yeah. Yeah. But this it does delay your wild growth. This opens up an opportunity where if he draws into a big seven drop like Ancient of Lore, Doctor Boom, he can play it after both shredders. Raynad's hand is really bad. Yes. He needs to draw a weapon off the top. Like I was talking about, without the weapon, you don't have anything to supplement your minions. Your minions are all very weak in right. the stack, actually. Well, it, they're, wow. they're, weak. Whoa. they're weak to start. And Raynad has no response. He needs to draw into it. Or, has, or Whirlwind. Yeah. yeah. Whirlwinds. Uh, whirlwinds. Uh, whirlwind. No, it's Whirlwind. Uh, I think. Yeah, it's Whirlwind. Just one Whirlwind. Would and he would do that. Would, would, yeah. He would do that. Yeah. Weapon would be insane, though. No, oh, he's just going to Whirlwind and Battle Rage for a card. Yeah. And he knows that he's playing Thorsan no. on six, so he just That's wants to make sure hand. he he opens up his hand as much as possible. Right. Yeah, it's oh. if he can if he can stay in here, it's Thorsan yeah. into four combo pieces at least. And there's the ooze, and double shredder comes Whoa. out. Oh, double shredder! And, and with a swipe and a keeper, that lets you kind of answer the patrons. Yeah, it lets you kill off the two health one and the three health one, and he has a board for sure, mm -hmm. to deal with the other ones, if it's, there are it's any. It's certainly looking very good for Phone Tap. Yeah. But, and, um, and what could be happening here? I think this is an armor turn. Yeah, you you can't play worse on Commander. I think you can uh, Loot Hoarder if you, you want. Can, you loot can Loot Hoarder order for sure, yeah. Yeah, the Emperor Thorsan next turn, it opens up so many opportunities for you to not yeah. only combo with Grimpage and Warsong Commander, but also draw, because and everything now, will pretty much open up on turn seven. If you're... Phone tap, you can think about silencing the loot hoarder. I think you just do silence the loot hoarder. Yeah, and then here powering it off and going face for eight. A lot of pressure being built up. No combo pieces. And he does still have that one innervate left in what his about, stack. What about hmm. keeper and then swipe face? Mm. Uh, nah. I think that's a little <laughs> ambitious. Okay. Get that four damage hit. Well, he does have the follow up charge hero power. I mean, he did a crazy does, but... amount of damage. Yeah. Right, but he is running out of stuff. Yeah. And if he duds for the next well, two turns. Well, he will run out of stuff on hmm. turn eight. 
In fact, I think, yeah, this is okay too. An all face. Okay. If you want to hit face, that's how you hit face, I Crib. See. Okay, I've learned. I think he's saving the you, keeper. You play the creature and you go. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. I got it. Crib's got it. <laughs> but uh, I think he's saving the keeper just in case the patron turn happens. Because mm -hmm. keeper swipe really answers patron well when yeah. they're reduced on mana. Because a lot of times there's. They're varying amounts of health, like one, two. You can pick off the two and then swipe the three in order to pick yep. them all off. So it opens up opportunities where you can kill them all in one turn. Yeah, I think Tharst in here. Yep, still. Yeah, I think you just have to. That's the way you're going to win. I don't know if you're going to find many other opportunities to do it. So it'd have to be Savage Roar plus something for Reynad to be dead. Yeah. Savage Roar representing eight here. Whoa! The card's all right. Do you do that, though? Yes. <laughs> okay. I mean, he puts him down to 10. <laughs> Here like comes the turn, though. Like, mm -hmm. if Reynad's going to, you know, make a Whoa! comeback, this is the turn. All right. So and now the question is, how can Reynad do this? Like, we've seen him mess up a lot of sequencing. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of he sequencing needs to, go quick. to mess up yeah. here. Yeah. Well, he, he sort of has to ha have the option of whether or not he like, plays quick. Armorsmith to gain health. <laughs> like, quick. Or Battle Rage to gain cards. TJ, he needs to go. Yeah. <laughs> he needs to start right now. <laughs> so he's going to pop that first. Or I don't think he realizes how long the animations are truly going to take. Yeah. All right. So he's going to go for the health route. Well, that's bad for our phone tap. It's just another thing to bounce a patron into. Yeah. And now he's, his board's a little bit blocked, but... And Phone Tap kind of smiles like, oh no. Or, oh yes. <laughs> I'm thinking more of the oh no. Okay. And that's right. Oh, it's tricky. I, I think you're whirlwinding eventually. If you're whirlwinding, uh, this you're hits not the worst on Commander. An owl. He can't clear the boom. And he didn't get the battle rage off, and a lot of stuff's dying. And now he's getting. Yep, yep. I told you he had to go. Yep. And and he's gonna miss a lot of patron attacks. One, just one. Well, he could have gotten even more, right? Oh, maybe not. Oh, one on the commander is not good, but swipe clears the entire board, and he's out of stuff. Yeah, but the and warrior has basically full health. That doesn't matter. You're getting hit for seven each turn. Yeah, yeah. Getting hit for seven each turn, you. The, he opted to gain health that turn instead of cards. So. You can either silence the Armorsmith or Hero Power it before you swipe, and it gains you more damage. Mm -hmm. uh, because if you swipe with it out there, what? he'll gain four more armor. I kind of like it. Like, it, Reyna's got two cards. Whatever. And those two cards are terrible. Well, it's just whatever. He, he, doesn't, know what, he doesn't know that they're terrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How good could two guards possibly be? Well, they're both Where's reduced. Or Commander Grim Patron good. Yeah, but yeah. even then, that doesn't really matter because uh, if he just swipes it here... It matters if you keep her. Yeah. yeah. So he decides to hero power it off. And I think... I wouldn't be surprised to see an oozer a keeper face. I think he was doing the math on if keepering face or keepering for the silence was better. And this is probably the most damage he Yeah, it's one do. more damage. So next turn... Does he set up for lethal as the big thing? He does two yeah, damage yeah. now, he's, puts he's it down to 14. He would have nine damage on board, so oh, he would have the same to damage. do... It's exactly the same damage. Well, that, that means it's bad then, because he took one more damage. It's exactly the same? Okay. Uh, he's just going to decide to hold on to everything. Okay. Playing well, super safe, awful draw, really whoa. good draw. I mean, he deals with the Dr. Boom, but he still doesn't have would stuff. would be insane. Well, I just see the, the shaking of the cards there. Okay, okay. that's really good. Pretty much just probably, any creature that he could play would have been good. I think you're just holding the ooze, I guess. Why like, not? There's plenty of weapons in that deck. Yeah. You're going to get value eventually. Um, if you're phone tap, your main worry here is just like either a huge patron combo in the upcoming turn in the upcoming turns or like an acolyte plus some damage plus a battle rage. Uh, anytime battle rage could get We know Oh, he already used both battle rages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Armorsmith's terrible. 
Yeah, it, this is basically the weakness and of the Grim Patron that's decks. It. Each individual card is terrible. Savage Roar off the top is going to end this game. Wow. And Raynad couldn't quite do it. Had a really insane turn, but... You can see Phone Tap. Phone Tap is on match point, guys. Yes, he's... Phone Tap is on match point with his Hunter deck, which he's had the most success with. He's fist pumping. Yeah. He has to beat either Hunter or Warrior with a Hunter deck that's actually teched pretty well for both of those because he has Harrison Joes in his Hunter. Yeah, yeah. and um, Hunter just by itself is pretty good against uh, Grim Patron. Yeah, and Grim Patron is the best deck out there if you're even yeah. or maybe slightly favored. Yeah, that's a good right. spot. Yeah. If you're going to be up 2-1, Hunter is a good deck to be up 2-1 with. Yeah. yeah. So, so far today, Hunter has slightly above a 50% win rate. Unbelievable. So I believe it's around 50 <laughs> Well, 52%. the losing players had Hunters too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's true. That's, true. So, it is that's not so far today. That's so far over the whole weekend. It's got a total of a 52% of a win rate, I do believe. It is interesting. Yeah. We came into today yeah. with four Hunter players, four non-player Hunters. Yeah. Final, two Hunter players. Yeah. So the Hunters did succeed quite a bit. Yeah. Warrior surprisingly has um, about the same win rate. So it's, I right. think Warrior might be exactly 50%. I haven't accounted the last two series. Well, when all Do players... Do you have statistics on Shaman, just out of curiosity? Uh, Shaman, after that last matchup, uh, I have to factor in the 03. So total, it's 5 and 9. Oh. Wow. Is yeah. that 50%? Not quite 50%, Crip. Well, Shaman's gone, okay. which is really good news for Phone Tap <laughs> and fans of him. Yeah. Yeah. Don't have to sweat the Shaman. We're sweating Hunter now if you're wanting Phone Tap to win. Mm -hmm. Raynan has to take two straight against the Hunter deck with his Patron Warrior and his own and his own Hunter. Wouldn't it be poetic, though, if the Grand Finals was Hunter versus Hunter? Hunter versus Hunter Game 5 would be it, yeah. All right. Well, we are leading into that. Yeah. Well, he hits his two drops, Phone Tap does, so he gets Haunter Creeper, Mad Scientist. That's a good start. Two, two Mad Scientists, uh, yes. but he draws a trap. Yeah. I was like, that's a really good, oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Kind of the issue you run into when you draw too many of those. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Often you encourage that draw because Mad Scientist is unbelievably good keep. Yeah, so you're you're even more likely than usual to get it. Yeah. Well, Raynad sort of draws duds as well, double executes. Uh, yeah, while it may be good later. He's got the axe. Yeah. And that. Battle range. Good. Pretty likely. We're in one card, card range now. now. Yeah. Better than last game at points. Yeah. Hunter's Mark's not a great draw, though. Yeah. Not a lot of targets to hit with it in this matchup. Emperor Thorsen is probably the best you're going to do. Yep. And an Armor Smith, pretty good for Raynad. Could even see a whirlwind off the one ones if he wanted to, but he'll probably want to mm. keep the whirlwind. How much does he want to play around Eaglehorn Bow? A lot. You wouldn't whirlwind the armor smith if you were to whirlwind. Oh, or you would. Well, we don't know if he's going to whirlwind. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's just not going to. This makes sense. One ones aren't incredibly scary. Whirlwind is a combo piece. Mm -hmm. It will gain some value later on as well with cards such as Unleash the Hounds. You think there's some merit just keeping the trap up and going face? Well, the armor is still going to be there, so it's still going to give armor to Yeah, but you can just kill player. it later. But how much armor is it going to give you before later happens? Yeah, the safe like play. A turn for a taunt. Uh, just kill next yeah. There's red course there. <laughs> oh, yes, of course. <laughs> Well, with Death Bite, maybe that yes. would be a realistic yeah, Frothing right. Berserker might have sort of a taunt. Well, then you just kill the Armorsmith and Frothing is prison. Lothab's really nice. That's true. And Scientist Hero Power, not the worst thing ever. So if he can start drawing into stuff like Savannah High Main, he's doing well. And he's going to leave up the loot border. I like this. Yeah, he's going to try and just push for more damage. Go for an aggressive plan. He's got another freezing hand. No I think point. He, uh, I think he really understands like the the issue with the Grim Patron. It's yeah. that once you once you start the draw, you keep drawing. It's, it's dying early. Yeah. Is the Grim Patron's problem not late? Yeah. Uh, so he's gonna push for this. Gets one more damage, and it saves your one one. So basically, two more damage. You're gonna get a bow charge if he runs in the loot hoarder, and you have another freezing anyway. Yeah. 
And to Raynad, he's thinking, if I proc this freezing, his mad scientist is going to fetch the other one, which I don't want. Yeah. What I'm really amazed is how many times Phone Tap is drawn into terrible trap combinations through his games. It's happened a lot this tournament. Yeah. I think you're saying tournament, but I think you mean Is it phone just tap. Phone Tap? <laughs> yes. <laughs> From what I remember, it's just been Phone Tap. I'm pretty surprised we didn't see... Oh, wow. Really good top deck for Phone Tap. There are executes in Raynad's hand, but yeah. even still. Well, paving the way for it with Lothab is actually really great because you know that the board's going to be in a pretty good state going into the next turn. Right. And making sure that you have like a good board to place Savannah Hyman on is one of the strengths of the <laughs> hand. I think that, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Right, like, I'm surprised he didn't cycle the Battle Rage last turn. I feel like a lot of players might have. Uh, I guess he feels he can get value off of it later. I feel like these freeze traps are just crushing. Raynet cannot deal with one. Yeah, it's interesting here though, like, do you just throw away your bow? Nah. Love the time. You just run in your Lothab? Yeah. Okay. You're giving up five damage to save a bow that's going to probably get six damage? Yep. Maybe nine damage if you get off the other freezing. So, probably worth it long term. But, he's gonna go with the bow. And kill off the loot hoarder. Okay, I like this better. This is... It's because uh, Raynet obviously had no idea what to do against one freeze trap, and he still got two. And he removed the option <laughs> is of... Is that the logic? You're just like, well, if you couldn't <laughs> deal with one, try two. <laughs> well, he you can't was, really play both was, at once. He was kind of... Uh, like, leaving the option just to tempo him out by yeah. returning the loot hoarder. But now he realizes Raynet is not even willing to do that. Yeah. And so it, it, I, think, hand. I think it's a sudden change of play that seems oh, great. Oh, and this is, like, bad. Because wow, basically wastes some of his mana for this turn, which isn't a huge deal, but decides, you know, like, two turns later, oh, wait, I do want to cycle Battle Rage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Again, kind of going back to his lack of experience with the deck, he, he wasn't aware that maybe he did need to cycle it or else he would get aggroed down. So he has 13 on board, 15 with hero power. That's a lot of damage, TJ. That is a lot of damage. I just don't see how Raynad comes even close to going back in this game. It's going to be... I mean, this, his early draw was just all duds. The executes don't do much for the early game he of Hunter. Needs, he needs a completely different hand. Yeah, you can see phone tap. Like, if you're phone tap, you're still scared. Seven cards in a patron hand yeah. could wipe you. Like, really yeah, if scared. he had a completely different hand, it right. could be scary. But and he has the opposite of that And you see hand. phone tap when he, when he played just the frothing. Pretty clearly, he's like, yeah, okay, that's fine. And that mad scientist gets value. Because it, it bluffs the second trap, which you can't deal with. Oh, man. Which is hilarious. Uh, so he only has six on board now. Wow! <laughs> Turn seven. And if this isn't Phone Tap's tournament to take, yeah. I don't know why. Two games in a row now on turn seven, Dr. Boom has showed up for, oh, he hasn't played yet. for Phone Tap. Oh, he has man. not played it yet. He's a little scared mm. of the Warsong patron combo running into Boombots. Oh, no. Overthinks it. He had a freezing trap up, even. Well, he still does. Yeah. He's... He's worried about Warsong charging something out to soak the freezing trap and then getting yeah. domed for mm -hmm. like 10. To be honest, you can't really blame him for playing safe. This is match point. That's, this is tournament yeah, point for him. Look, look at this nail biting turn. Look at that. Yeah. He's eating his whole finger. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is terrible. He's going to be eating nine damage. He can't He's saying, it. okay, if you don't have four damage. <laughs> a little better than three. He could be on a, he could have been on a draw to win. So five, yeah. six, seven. He just gave up Emperor Thorison because he was afraid of taking two extra damage. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a combo deck. And All now right. we're going to see boom. When you have to use combo pieces like this, it just crumbles. Phone Tap's afraid that he might be getting comboed here, but we know there's no combo no in sight. No way. Yeah. You can see Phone Tap, he's taking like he's deep breaths. He's going to have, and this has got to be a concede. Oh my goodness. It's not over quite yet, the but Reina goes for the concede button. Uh, uh. He clicked it, I think. Did he click it? He it's clicked quick. it. He clicked it. The headset's off. Phone Tap's going to take ESL Legendary Series Season 2. Oh, man. The 
champion of the Season 2 Legendary Series right on your screen. It is going to be Phone Tap, and we're not going to waste any time. We're going to have Dan standing by on stage with a winner's interview. Congratulations to our Season 2 champion, Phone Tap, from Team Hearthletics. He takes $10,000 and 100 World Championship points. And the man of the moment as he has overcome all odds despite coming through the open bracket in the last chance qualifier. Phone tap. A lot of journeys, a lot of emotions. Tell me what's going on through your mind right now. I won. I can't. You've won. You're the most recent addition to your team. You've done it. You've helped so many people in the past practice for their tournament victories. But today, it's about your victory. What do you want to say to thank all the people who have made this possible for you? All right, first off, uh, shout out to my team, Hearth Lakes, for uh, recruiting me and believing in me. Shout out to uh, my, my practice group, Under the Radar. Uh, you guys got me this far, and I helped you, and this is great. And shout out to uh, Sixo, because um, he, he helped me uh, get through this tournament. So that's, I guess that's a better shout out for him. So. <laughs> all right, congratulations. At this time, we'd like to welcome Milkcast to the stage to present to you the trophy as a season two champion. Thank you so much to everybody who has tuned in throughout the season two champion. Phone Tap is your winner. A consolation prize to Raynette, who has also gotten second, but we are done. Thank you so much to Gigabyte and Plantronics for sponsoring season two. Thank you so much for everybody tuning in and watch. We'll see you guys next season for more Legendary Series. Have a good night, and we'll see you guys next time.